Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So happy to be here with you on this cool, rainy morning. As we begin worship, we'll start with some announcements. Um, our, we're going to lay our dear friend and sister in Christ, Judy Ralph, to rest. We're going to honor her memory Tuesday morning. The service is at 11. However, I'm asking anyone who can to come a little bit early, say around 10, 15. We've asked people to bring their own chairs like we do for worship. But I worry that some of our ARC friends may not be able to do that or may not know to do that. So if anyone's willing to help me set up some chairs, Pastor Han and I will set up a couple extra chairs early right before the service. Um, we'll make sure that they're up, but then we'll kind of set them out together. Are there any other announcements we want to lift this morning? No. Then would you stand in body or spirit and join in the call to worship? May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Would you please be seated and listen to these words of grace as Kristen sings for us, Great is thy faithfulness.
Would you join me in the opening prayer as it's printed in the bulletin? God, you have drawn us to this time of worship from all different places and situations. Fill us with your love and grace and grant us courage and strength so that we may love you and serve you with joy. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries, any time markers that we want to celebrate this week? So there's none here, but I saw Betty this week, and I know that she celebrated a birthday, I think on Thursday. And so let's take just a moment. Wednesday, was it Wednesday? Perfect, Wednesday. Let's take just a moment and pray a blessing on Betty. Would you join your hearts with me? God, we thank you for Betty, for all the years of life she's had on this earth. We pray that you would pour out grace upon grace on her, that this year might be filled with light and life and joy. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we can do our children's sermon. We've got more friends coming. I'm so excited. So this morning, uh, Jesus, in the text we're going to read in a little bit, Jesus talks to his disciples, and they're in a bit of a controversy, and the controversy is this. The disciples are not washing their hands before they eat. Now this was a ritual that was part of the Pharisees, and the disciples aren't doing it. And Jesus takes a moment to say, hand washing, it's not bad, it's good, right? It's important. But what is so much more important is the things that are in our hearts. So what's something that can get stuck in our heart that maybe we don't need and we want to let go of? Any ideas? What gets stuck in our hearts that maybe we don't need? If we think of this from the perspective of children, this is children's time, we might say jealousy over who got the last piece of cake, right? Or we might say, um, you know, I failed that math test and I was really sad about it. Jesus says it's the things that are in our hearts that matter the most because from what's inside us comes all of our other behavior, So let's take just a moment and ask Jesus to help us with the things that are in our hearts. Let's pray. Jesus, you love us, and you have promised to help us. When we find that there is something in our hearts that we don't want, help us to hand it over to you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Let's listen for God's word to us from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and all who hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 15. Would you stand in body or spirit as we read from... A gospel lesson. Then he called to the crowd and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? 
He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you still also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Would you pray with me? O Lord, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that come to our hearts be good and acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A video made the rounds on Facebook this week. It's called 2020 as told by friends. Anyone see it? I definitely recommend looking it up. It contained clips from the 90s sitcom that are relevant to our current moment. Chandler and Joey sitting in living room chairs in their living room and saying, outside, bad, inside, good. Joey lamenting, I miss my family, I miss my friends, I miss the coffee house. And finally, Phoebe shrieking, wash your hands! It's appropriate, right? In our scripture lesson this morning, immediately before what we read, the Pharisees had a Phoebe moment. They screamed, wash your hands at Jesus and his disciples. They weren't concerned because they were in the middle of a global pandemic. They were concerned because the ritual of hand washing was one of the practices that the Pharisees had adopted to honor God. And they wanted everyone to do it with them. And so when they saw Jesus, a highly respected teacher, and his disciples not washing their hands, they criticized him for it. Jesus pushes back and argues that hand washing isn't the important thing. Ultimately, what you eat comes out of you. But God is more concerned about what is going inside. What's inside the heart is what matters, not what's you do with your hands. And this is worth dwelling on for a minute, because a lot of times when we talk about what human sin or brokenness looks like, we think about physical actions, right? We think about what we do. You know, maybe we told a lie, or maybe we lost our temper and shouted, maybe we punched someone in the face. And all those things matter, right? But Jesus says that they all come out of what's going on in our hearts. So today, he's really offering us an invitation. Take a look at our hearts, because it's from there that the rest of our life flows. It's so easy to stop with external behavior. Say, I didn't lie, I didn't cheat, I didn't lose my temper, and so I'm good, everything's fine. And yeah, you may be very well behaved, but there still could be something stopped up in your heart. And just like physical blockages and our physical hearts are bad, they cause us pain, they're unhealthy, so are blockages in our spiritual hearts. If our heart is stopped up, we may be doing the right things on the outside, but we will not be free and not be flourishing. And sooner or later, if we don't deal with what's in our hearts, those things can fester and turn sour and have ways of coming out sideways, like by losing our temper or procrastinating on something that needs to be done or failing to try something new for fear of being hurt. All of these things and more are symptoms that something might be stuck in our hearts. They're signs that point. Maybe there's something else going on. And God wants more for us than that. Jesus says, I came to give you life, an abundant life. 
so today I hear in the text an invitation to dig down deep and to talk about the things that we carry with us hidden in our hearts. But before we turn with some thoughtfulness about what might be going on inside, I want to say from what perspective we're doing this from. We're not doing this to feel guilty or feel bad about ourselves. I'm really looking at this in the perspective of Father Gregory Boyle. He works with gangs in East LA and he has a mantra which I quite like which says, God wants nothing from us. God only wants things for us. And so as we consider the things we carry with us in our hearts, let's not do it from a perspective of shame. Let's think about it as God wants nothing from us. God only wants things for us. Because the truth is, friends, all of us carry things in our hearts. And the things that we have inside there, the hurts that we carry, the bitterness or perhaps the regrets over things we did or things we didn't do, they don't come from nowhere. We all have them for reasons. Sometimes our anger or our bitterness or even our regret is justified. Nothing comes from nothing. If there's something in your heart, you can probably tell the story of how it got there. And yet, and yet, those things can still get in our way. It can still turn our lives bitter and make our days sour. And so we cannot leave them there. Maybe up till now you've been good at letting things go, careful about what gets lodged in your heart, but the pandemic has turned our lives upside down and we have all lost things. People, moments, experiences that are irreplaceable. And odds are we've got some feelings. Maybe we're angry. Maybe we resent it. Maybe we're afraid. Today, Jesus invites us to look inward and to ask ourselves, just what is it that's inside my heart? What have I been carrying that I need to set down? Is my heart right? Or is there something I need to hand over to the Lord? Because we cannot live freely, we cannot flourish if our heart is blocked up. It's a little bit like that scene from Sesame Street where Ernie longs to play the saxophone. He wants to play the blues and he wants to play them soulfully. But he finds that every time he goes to play a soulful note, he instead makes a silly squeak. And he goes to his friend, Mr. Hoot, for advice and Mr. Hoot tells him, I think I know your problem. It's rubber and it quacks. You'll never find the notes you seek until you pay your dues. You gotta put down Put down the ducky. You gotta put down the ducky if you wanna play the saxophone. That's right. You gotta put down the ducky. Put down the ducky. You gotta leave the duck alone. Ernie wants to flourish as a saxophone player, but he cannot do it until he's willing to put down his rubber ducky. In the same way, we cannot flourish until we are ready to acknowledge that there are hurts in our hearts, and until we are ready to lay them down. So what's in your heart today? Is there something on your pandemic pain playlist you need to hand over to God? Is there a lingering regret over something you've done, something you didn't do? Is there a bitterness that you've carried for too long? A fear? that's lodged itself in your heart and keeps you from moving forward. It is normal to carry hurt and pain with us. It's natural even. But the thing is, friends, even our justified bitterness can be the death of us. Jesus knows this, and he knows we'd be so much better without it. And so today invites us to examine our hearts for the spiritual blockages that might get us in trouble. 
it is easy to focus on externals and say, I'm okay, everything's okay. As long as we're not lying or cheating or stealing, we're good, right? That's true. But Jesus came, not so that we could be good men and women. Jesus came so that we could be free, so that we could flourish, so that we could live abundantly. Our Creator wants us to flourish, not just to be good. And so today we look at our hearts and we look at what might be lodged in there. All of us have a ducky, maybe two, and it's time to set them down. It's time to put down the duckies so that we can play the saxophone. We may have gotten so used to them being there that our fingers are wrapped tight around them, but we've got to set them down. We have to. We've got to set them down over and over and over again into the hands of the one who made us, who loves us and redeems us and sustains us so that we can embrace the abundant life Jesus is offering to us. Today, let us lay down our duckies. Let's put them down so that we can play the saxophone and also embrace life abundant. Amen. the sermon part. You've missed a lot of the singing, but we are now at Joys and Concerns, and we're so glad that you're with us. We just prayed for Betty Emery as she celebrates her 89th birthday. Happy birthday, Betty. And what other joys and concerns do we have today? No others. Let's go My, to God. Uh, oh, Eric, yes. Yes. My wife is uh, moving on. Her, uh, her work has uh, closed due to the uh, coronavirus and uh, she'll be moving to a different location staying with the same company um so the transition for her <clears throat> we pray for carol is this carol? Is carol yes carol. hi carol nice to meet you carol we pray for you in the midst of all the changes in your life that god would sustain you and give you a double dose of patience and grace and strength as you go through these times of change. Other joys or concerns? I get to visit with my dad in person on Tuesday 
afternoon from 3.30 to 3.50. They're only allowing 20 minute visits. Um, but it will be in person and I'm grateful for that. Oh, praise God. We thank God for the opportunity that you will have to visit with your dad uh, this week. And we pray that it is joyful and encouraging to both of you. Any others? Let us go to God in prayer. Merciful God, in love you created us, and in love you sustain us day after day. So with confidence we bring our prayers to you, knowing that you will hear and respond. We pray for all of those who are separated from loved ones, from family or friends or neighbors, for those who find it difficult to forgive the past wrongs done to them. God, we pray for those who have carried feelings of guilt or regret for something they did or something they neglected to do. We pray for those who find it difficult to ask for forgiveness or forgive themselves. God, we pray that you would draw near with mercy and strength to all those who are watching someone they love try to cope with serious illness or injury. We pray for all those who are looking for your miraculous intervention in their lives. God, we pray for many others in this world who are suffering today from grief or loneliness, hunger, poverty, violence, and illness. God, we pray that you would draw near to all these situations, bringing healing hope, bringing your light and your grace and your peace as only you can. God, we pray for our world. We pray for all of those who are suffering from the coronavirus that you would bring healing. We pray for all of those working to fight this illness that you would give us clues on how best to treat it and make a vaccine readily available soon. We pray for all those who find themselves on the front line, those who are working our grocery stores, those who are keeping everything clean and sanitized, those who are bringing healing in hospitals and nursing homes and care facilities. Draw near to them all. Give them strength for the day and blessed rest at the end of it. Sustain all of us, O oh Lord, who look to you in hope. Strengthen us, help us to lay down our duckies, to trust you with all that hurts us and causes us to be afraid. Help us to hand over our hurts to you so that we might be a light to all those who find themselves in dark places. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, as together we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God is good. Scripture tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. For every good thing that we have received from God this week, every phone call from a friend, every beautiful sunrise or sunset, for the cool breeze that blows, let us continue to offer ourselves and our gifts to God. You can leave your offering in the basket as you leave today. You can give online. There's information on the screen. Let us continue to say thank you to God for all that God has given. Would you join me in praying our offertory prayer? God of abundance and joy, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured on our lives. Receive all our gifts offered in love and bless them to your service. In Jesus' name, amen.
God invites us to lay our burdens down, to put down our duckies, so that we can play the saxophone, but so also that we can be free, free to be God's hands and God's feet, free to find peace for ourselves and to bring peace to others. As you prepare to go out into this world, let us listen to God's our closing hymn, sung by Kristen. <clears throat> trust God with all of your duckies. Put them down and go forth and live the life abundant. Amen. Amen.